Hey everybody and welcome back. Certainly glad you could join me today. In this video we're going to look at a really simple high key studio lighting setup and then as an additional step we're then going to take that lighting setup and we're going to turn it into an HDRI so that you can use it in other projects without having to set up all of these shapes all the time. What I've got here is I've got one of my male characters set up in the scene and I've got a camera set up over there that he's looking at. So he's posed and ready to go. And what we need to do is create some lighting. Now, the first thing that we want is a large light behind him. And this is going to be a giant octo box. So I could just drag the ones that we've created previously into this scene but for the purposes of people who haven't yet watched those videos i'm going to create one so what we're going to do is we're going to click on the create new primitive icon at the top and we're going to set it as a cylinder length we want it to be 0 0.01 meters so one centimeter diameter we're going to have it about 1.5 meters across Segments is just going to be one sides. We're going to have it eight a uh, an octo box. We're going to hit accept. So there's our octo box. So what we're going to do is in the parameters tab here, we're going to rotate it along the x axis like that. So we're going to rotate that 90 degrees like so. And then we're going to drag it so that it's just behind our character. Going to make sure that it's set to zero on the x axis so that it's not drifted off. And we're going to drag it up like so so what we should be seeing is that this light is going to be almost exactly in line with his kind of neck chin area so that everything that we can see in the camera is going to be encased in light marvelous now what we're going to do is we're going to come to our surfaces tab for that cylinder we're going to expand all of the information here and all we're going to do is we're going to change our emission to white like so we're going to hit OK and then we're going to change our luminance units to KCDMR2 like that. Now we're going to come into our camera, we're going to go into NVIDIA iRay preview mode and as you can see that's created a really cool kind of highlight around the back of his head like that. Now I'm actually going to drop into scene only lighting so you can see everything that's there and more importantly you can see if it's too bright and it's actually creating some really powerful highlights there so i'm going to drop this down to about 800 there you go now we've got the highlights but we're not losing any of the detail around the edge of his head so we're getting that cool lighting effect there so we're going to drop back into texture shaded mode go into perspective view so that's our first light ready to go now the next light that we're going to do is going to be another Octobox. So we're going to simply click on create new primitive. All the information is going to be identical. So we're going to hit accept like that. We're going to select our new shape and we're going to drag this one up so that it's over his head. And we're going to move it back like this. And then along the X axis, we're going to rotate it so that it's pointing down kind of like that and then we're going to reduce the scale ever so slightly to probably somewhere around 60% so that it's more of a sensible kind of size and shape there like that so now we're going to go into our surfaces tab we're going to expand that all again on the emissions tab we're going to turn emission on once again and we're going to change our units to kcdmr2 thingy and then we're going to jump back into our camera and we're going to see what we get from the render this time. See if it's bright enough, too bright or not bright enough. So that's quite a cool kind of lighting setup. I'm thinking maybe it's a shade too bright. So I'm thinking of dropping it down to 1200 just so that it doesn't give us any burnout on those highlights like that. I'm pretty happy with that. So we're going to come back into texture shaded mode again like that into perspective view and now the last light that we're going to create is going to be a simple plane don't need to mess around with all of that geometry and this one's going to be about one meter and like that and we're going to bring this one up to about 
waist height and pull it away from him like so. Just gonna make sure that it's up really close. And then we're going to rotate that one inwards like this. And this is gonna act as if it were a reflector. Now, obviously, when you're creating an HDRI, a reflector is worse than useless. So we're going to actually make this a light emitting surface, but it's going to be very weak. So it's going to be kind of a facsimile. In real life, this would be a silver surface, which reflected the light from behind and above to create a kind of glow underneath. But obviously, we don't have the ability to put that into an HDRI. So instead, we're just going to go into our properties tab. We're going to turn our emissions on. And then we're going to switch to KCDMR2 and this one's only going to be maybe 50. Come back to our camera and let's switch to NVIDIA iRay preview mode and see what happens. So this is looking not too bad. I'm actually going to experiment. I'm going to bring the plane up a fraction like so. Because I'm interested in what it's going to do to his face rather than everything else since the face is really what we're focusing on in this instance. So we can come back to our surfaces tab and maybe bump this up to 120, sort of double the power. And that just creates the high key effect that we're after. It's lifting the shadows up, but not so much that they disappear entirely. So we've got our lighting set up and I'm happy with the look that it's creating. So what we need to do now is first things first, we want to come back to our texture shaded mode and come back to perspective mode. So what we could do is we could actually group all of these objects together and we could parent them to the camera like that. And now we could save that as a scene subset and then the lights would follow the camera around wherever we went. Obviously we'd still have to parent them to, we'd have to match them up to where our character was. So that's not gonna work in this instance. So what we actually want to do is create an HDRI from these images. What we're going to do is we're going to create a new camera like this, and we're going to let it sit at its default settings like that. And then in the parameters tab, we're going to set all of these things, or at least the X and Z to zero. We don't going to set the rotations to zero, although it doesn't really matter because of what we're going to do next. And then we're going to drop the camera down until it's roughly in line with the center of the character's head. So we may want to come back on the Z axis, not the X, the Z a little bit, just so that it's kind of where the face is. Cause we know the lighting around the face is exactly how we want it. Hold down the control key and click on the eye icon for our character so that it completely disappears. And then we're going to jump into our camera too. And all you're going to see is white, which is exactly what we want. Now in lens, in the properties tab, in the parameters, we're going to change the lens distortion type to spherical like so. And now we're going to render this image out. And when we hit our render, doesn't matter what resolution you've got it to, you can do it in 1920 by 1080. As you're gonna see, all you can see is <laughs> three white objects like that. So we're gonna save that as three.jpg, hit save. And now in your render settings, what we're going to do in tone mapping, I'm gonna bring mine onto the screen so that you can see in tone mapping, what we've got is various different properties that we can use to adjust these. So what I'm actually going to do is change the shutter speed. So I'm going to reduce that to half of the shutter speed. In fact, I'm going to do it again. I'm going to say 30. So it's a quarter, give or take. Then I'm going to hit render. It's going to have a bit of a think and these should be white again. So that one's going to be two. And now what I'm actually going to do is I'm going to double it and double it again. So it's going to be 500. It's going to be our shutter speed. So it's going to go up to 250, then 500. Then we're going to hit render again. And you're going to see all white again. So we're going to make that one four. Like so. And then we're going to double it and double it again. So it's going to be 2000. Like so. And as you can see at the bottom, the actual 
reflector, the plane that's a reflector is actually now starting to turn gray, which means that we're getting a good capture of the brightness difference between the objects. So I'm going to actually stop that there. And this one's going to be five. And we're going to save that again. And then in the render settings again, we're going to double it and double it again. So it's going to be on eight thousandth of a second and we will hit render again. As you can see now, the objects are in fact turning gray, which means we're getting to the point where we've got a good capture of their luminosity. And then I'm going to do one more, which is going to be a 32 thousandth of a second hit render again. And as you can see now, they are definitely gray. So we've actually got a really solid capture of their brightness. Now we hit cancel again, and this one's going to be seven. Next thing we need to do is bring up Adobe Photoshop or the equivalent software that you're using. Once we're in Adobe Photoshop, we're simply going to automate merge to HDR Pro, and then we're going to browse to our files, and then we're going to hit OK. Then Photoshop's going to have a bit of a think, and then it's going to ask us to identify which stops these are at. So this is where we need to remember what our settings were so for a start we know that we are on f8 and iso 100 and it was just our exposure times that were changed so we're going to scan through them all and make sure that we've got them all in the right one so we know that this one was one slash 32,000. we know that this one was one over eight thousand we know that this one was one over two thousand one over five hundred one over one two five and then one over sixty and then we hit okay and it's gonna say blah 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 just hit okay like so and then it's gonna create this for us like that so now we're going to go to file save as we're going to change our settings to an hdr like that so we had to find that there and we're just going to call this one high dash key like so and hit save so now we're going to close down photoshop and we're going to come back to dash studio i'm going to move my render settings out of the way the first thing we want to do before we do that is hit environment and we're going to change our environment now to dome only and we're going to change our environment map to the file that we just created and then i'm going to move my render settings out of the way so that you can see we're going to hold down control and we're going to click on the eye on felix we're going to come to our camera one and now we're going to hide all of the items from there we can actually delete camera two now because we don't need that anymore and then hopefully if we go into NVIDIA iRay mode, we should just need to rotate the dome and change the dome intensity. And we can press draw dome so that we can actually see what's going on. Change our environment intensity to suit. Just keep increasing it until it gives us what we're after. So once we're back into our, our render settings tab, we can just tweak the environment intensity until we've got the lighting that we want. We can change the dome rotation. It's normally 45 degrees out, but we've got draw dome on, so we can keep tweaking it until we get it exactly right. Let's try 270. And let's just check where we are, make sure that that's exactly right. So we can pull away and you can see that that is exactly in the right place. So it's actually 270 out of alignment in that one. So we come back there and now we've got our high key lighting setup set up as an HDRI. And then all we have to do is play around with the intensity until it gives us exactly what we're after. And that's really all there is to it. Now you've got that as an HDRI. If you need to change the intensity by a huge amount, you can obviously drag it back into Photoshop and just change the brightness. That's not a problem. But I hope you found this useful. Let me know what you think in the comments below and I'll see you in the next one. Bye bye.